How's it going, everybody? Brian Elvers and Dave Meltzer here, Wrestling Observer Radio. It is June 30, 2024, figure4online.com slash wrestlingobserver.com. we got a lot of news to get into here today, including a Forbidden Door show, mm-hmm. which had its ups and downs, but my God, that main event, absolutely unbelievable. I, I, I thought most of the show was really good. Um, yeah, main event, main event and the Brian Danielson match I thought were fantastic. Um, and the Zack Sabre match, too, for that matter. That Zack Sabre finish, oh my... The last few minutes of that match were incredible, and that finish, whatever that was, is like, man, man. By the way, did you hear what Zack Sabre said? What did he say? Well, actually, he said a lot of things, but he said that anyone who doesn't see what a talent Orange Cassidy is, is an idiot. <laughs> well, I, think, I think we've all known that for a while. <laughs> well... He's just. I think he was like inviting, uh, inviting idiots to respond. Well, I think the three best matches on the show by far were Shingo and Brian Danielson, Owen Hart Cup, the Zack Saber Jr. Orange Cassidy match, and of course the main event, which agree. in fact saw Will Ospreay lose to Swerve Strickland in the AW title match. Uh, there was a ref bump, and then out came Old Don Callis. And he tried to get Will Osprey to use a screwdriver, and on, Osprey on, could on, not. On, on Nana. Well, no, he was. He wanted him to use it on. Well, on origi- Swerve first, originally yes. on originally on Swerve, but then on Nana, yeah. And then Nana, he thought about using it on Nana, but Nana begged off. And uh, finally, Osprey just threw down the screwdriver. He got back into the ring, and Swerve hit him with a stomp, a house call, arm breaker, another house call, a JML driver pinned him clean in the middle of the ring, just a absolutely fantastic match oh yeah yeah it was one of the best matches of the year i thought you know right you know probably top three ish top four so i didn't see the odds i saw that you said that the odds uh, you know a lot of heavy favorites was was swerve the heavy favorite here like eight to one okay All right. real heavy real heavy because i know there were people surprised by the finish but i thought it was the only possible finish going in for a lot of reasons uh, i mean i mean it wasn't the, it wasn't the place for him to win no, I if he's gonna, you, if, he's gonna, if he was gonna win in the next, like in the immediate future, then it would be at Wembley. I don't see should. any, which, which I don't think point. is happening. No, although, he, although, although, well, you know, you know, you can you can argue that one, but the thing is, um, I think that this show, um, you know, I mean, everyone knows how good Will Osprey is, but this show really helped Swerve a lot because you know, not only to get a big win and a, a relatively clean win, but he had an, you know, he had the best match. You know of of his AEW career by far, and arguably one of the two best matches of his entire career. And it was an you know on a pay per view that every you know that with a big audience, and um, you know it's like he came across, um, he came across as you know a real main event superstar, which is he's been to a degree, but I mean like you know there's there's always been that question until you prove it, you you don't you know what I mean. When it comes to you, you can, anyone can be anyone can be made world champion. Anyone can, but to be a real world champion, you have to prove it. And this was the one where he—I mean, he, he was he was good in his other matches, but this was a different level. I mean, this is the the best that he's done, and he did the, he did very strong character work um, building the match up. Uh, the show was a big success as far as locally goes. I um, mean, you know, the gate wise and attendance wise, and um, you know the early pay-per-view numbers um, from streaming um, look good. So, overall, um, you know, I mean, like, nothing you, can knock, nothing you can knock on the business sense, even though people, I'm sure, will try. Well, it's a very long show, so let's start with it here. The uh, Zero Hour opened up with Gabe Kidd, Roderick Strong. No, no, no. It opened with, um, uh, first match was uh, Serpentico and, um, what was it? Hey, uh, um, Kyle Fletcher. I didn't see this match. Yes, yeah, Pentagon and Kyle Fletcher. It was like a quick squash. It was no big. It was it was literally no big deal. Um, it went three minutes, and um, Kyle Fletcher gave him brainbuster on the top rope on the turnbuckle and pinned him. It was just. I think it was just a way to give um, to have fifteen matches. I mean, when the show started, Jeff Jarrett goes, "You know, we've got fifteen matches tonight." And I go, "There's another one." And there was, but at least it was short. And um, I think it was just a way to give Kyle Fletcher a win because he lost on Friday night. And, um, you know, it was just 
nothing much to it. Just he got a. It's like a t- like a TV match. So then we had Gabe Kidd, Roderick Strong versus Private Party versus Malachi Black and Brody King versus She and Kyle O'Reilly, and uh, this was a good match. There was a spot. Very early on, where she tried to give Brody the vertical suplex brain buster. He, tried to give get him him brain, he was trying to get him a brain buster, and he gave him too much of a brain buster. Well, this was this was early. He couldn't get him up for a while. And then they kind of got out. But that was, to, that, was, that, that was to build for later, though. Yes. And then uh, Brody tagged in, got another big battle between these two guys. And so finally, Kyle and Malachi hit the ring, and uh, they do some spots. And then as she goes to hit Brody with this brain buster, Kyle kicks Brody in the face, and Brody's a big dude. And as she is not a big dude. He looks like a big dude, but he is a short guy. And something went wrong, and man, he dropped this guy right on his head. Oh. And it looked like a potential serious injury. And everyone's hitting big moves, and Brody's just lying there. But then when it came time to do his spot, he was back in, and he uh, ended up countering the silly string, grabbed Zay, gave him the gonzo bomb, and pinned him. And uh, good match. Yeah, good, good, you know. Mm, yeah, good match. Uh, um, thought that Private Party c- came off pretty well. I thought that uh, you know, um, you know, pretty much everyone did. You know, it's eight eight good wrestlers overall. You know, we had Tam Nakano and Willow Nightingale versus Momo Watanabe and Chris Statlander, and Willow and Statlander are facing off in the Owen Hart Cup, so they did a lot of spots together there. But at the end, Willow ends up hitting a pounce on Momo. She sends Statlander outside, hits her with a drop kick off the apron, and then Tam hits Momo with a cross arm German. And Pinzer, and I thought this was a very good match. These, uh, like Momo and Tam in particular, they had no compunction about just kicking each other hard. They, that, they that's beat the, the hell out of each other. That's that's the that's the style. It was hard for them because the crowd really didn't. You know, the crowad was more into uh, Statlander and Willow, and they didn't really they didn't really have much of a reaction. And they had to earn the reaction, and they did. You know, they got it, but. Um, you know, like at first when they came out, I was like, oh, you know, it might be tough when they're in. And it was a little tough when they were in. But once but they, their wrestling was very crisp. I mean, they're, you know, like they're just, you know, it's 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 uh, it's it's like it's much crisper than like American women's wrestling. Not just the harder hitting, but just the the fluidity of the moves and everything like that. And the, the suplexes and things like that. They're just technically it's just technically better. We had Mariah May and Soraya Owen Hart Cub match. And uh, Mariah, obviously, was super over as a baby face. Hikaru Shida was shown watching on. They had a striking battle. Harley jumps up on the apron. Tony yanks her off. And Harley took a bad bump right on her hip. And so Saray ends up hitting her finish, but Mariah got the ropes. And they went back and forth. Mariah hit a flash cradle, pinned her. And the crowd super into Mariah's win. And so Tony raises her hand afterwards. Mina Shirakawa runs out. She raises the other hand. Tony and Mina start fighting over her. And after the match is over, Excalibur goes, let's go to a video package telling you the story of this match. So we got the video package explaining it after the match was over, which was interesting. Well, the video package was to, 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 to promote the other match, too. Well, I know, but all of these play into each other. I mean, yeah. Tony, Mariah, Mina, I mean, they're all out there doing angles here in this match. So yeah. might have helped to explain it before the match, but whatever. We had a Hiromu and Titan and Yoda Suji versus the Lucha Brothers and Mystico. Did you, did you see the Hiromu interview last night? The one on Collision? Yeah. He was very excited to face Mystico. Well, at first he was like scared to death, and then he turned around and got really excited. I just thought he was like, I thought he was so very entertaining. You know, I mean, it was just like, very, you know, his facials are tremendous, and just the way, you know, when they told him, like, you know, he was acting like he didn't know it was Mystico was going to be his partner, you know, who the third guy was going to be. And they said, Mystico, and he was going, Mystico, oh, no, oh, no. And then he saw, all of a sudden was starting, oh, I could beat Mystico, you know, so. It's funny because, like, they, they, they used to have Jose, and they still have Alex Abrahantes, and, you know, their job was to, like, translate and do whatever. But the segment last night had... Hiromu, Titan, and Yoda, again, and the Lucha Brothers and Mystico. And, like, nobody was there with them. And so they all did this promo in broken English. I mean, you could barely understand anything they said, 
But they let him go out there and do it. They hyped up their match. So, yeah. anyway, this was a full-on Lucha match, and it was quite great. And I really enjoyed this match. Pentagon, the hot tag, he's running wild, and Phoenix did the rope walk kick and the stalling splash, all these great big moves. Everybody goes down, and then Mystico hits the La Mystica on Titan, gets the submission, which I guess explains why they had to do a DQ on Wednesday. Didn't want to beat him twice. Mm-hmm. But uh, I like this match a lot. A lot of fun. Really good match. Real, actually, kind of. An, I thought the match was excellent. And, uh, you know, the crowd was, uh, you know, I mean, Phoenix looked really good. And the um, crowd was, was, I think that whatever it is, it feels like, you know, Mystico is, um, he's got a lot of buzz on him right now. I guess, you know, because of the last couple of weeks and everything. But, um, I mean, he's like a real worldwide superstar now. You know, just in the sense of... Um, man you know like like i you know i mean he could you know i don't know that he necessarily drew for this show but you know he he seemed pretty over and um you know like just everybody every essentially everybody wants to work with the guy now because it's just easy and uh it's like you know it's like he's like a modern whatever you know like like a really uh you know like like a like a legit top top guy so the main show opened up with mjf and echicero and mjf got a you know ton tons of uh big 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 reaction yeah people loved him he's our scumbag chance Mm -hmm. and then the uh the match got going and i mean they didn't really have a ton of heat for the match i think part of it was i don't think anybody thought in a thousand matches Echicero was ever going to beat MJF. You, you know what? I, I, the one the one thing I, I do want to say about this show is I thought that everybody knew who was going to win every single match. It just felt like like the people knew. Um, and, you know, this I one... I wouldn't than, say every match, but I would say the majority. I, I, the, the, the one where I would say... I would judge, I, I, the, the, the exception would be Orange Cassidy and Zack. And well, that the, and also the Young Bucks and Okada versus Anthony Bowens and Cassidy. And I, I, I guess I guess I guess that could have gone either way, but yeah. I just expected Tanahashi would do the job because that's what he does now. Um, but like this one, yeah, I mean, of all the ones, like everybody knew that there wasn't a chance in hell that that Hechicero was winning. Yeah, I mean, some of the matches, like you knew, well, I knew, I figured that you know Swerve's going to beat Osprey because it doesn't make sense otherwise. But I think as a fan, you could convince yourself that maybe Osprey could win. A lot, a, a lot. There, there were there were a lot of people who were surprised Osprey lost. I will say that. And the but. Moxley match. I mean, you know, I think most people figured Naito was getting it back on this show. But you could convince yourself that maybe Moxley could win. But you could not possibly convince yourself. That Echi Sarah was going to beat MJF on this show. I mean, they had like... It was basically just a, sh- a showcase, although Echi Sarah did get some offense in. Yeah, he got some offense in, and I would say that it was a, you know, a good match. Oh, and, it was good. Yeah, MJF ended up uh, in a shoulder lock submission. He did a great job shell- selling his shoulder, and like nobody body was going to submit, though. And then he hit the Panama Sunrise, hit the Brain Buster, got the pin, and uh, it was... Yeah, it was he's good. using, using uh, Adam Cole moves. Good basic opener, yeah. Yeah, so I think there's a story there. Well, when Cole's back, I mean, you know, I, I asked the question last night with Tony for a reason. Like, mm-hmm. what's your philosophy when someone gets hurt? I mean, is it just starting up again when they came back? And he said, well, you know. It, every situation is different. Every situation is different. But I, I think that it doesn't make any sense for Cole to come back and not continue this thing with MJF. They shot the big angle and, you know. Yeah. There's been no follow up because he's been he's been hurt. Well, he's been, he has he can't wrestle, so how can you follow up? You have to wait. Well, Dave, you say that, but you know what? CM Punk can't wrestle either, and they've been doing that CM Punk Drew McIntyre feud for months now. Yeah, but that's an exception. I mean, you could do it's an could, exception, but you can do it. Is my point? You you, you can you can. It's you not can, like Cole can't walk. Like yeah, he's the, walking now. Okay, but the, the reason the reason that you're doing it is because Punk keeps screwing him. You don't want like Adam Cole isn't going to cost MJF the match with Hechicero. You know what I mean? That would be the. Well, he's equivalent. not going to. But I mean, there are things that you can do to keep the thing alive while you're waiting for him to return. Or, or you could just have a surprise, re, you know, a surprise return and have him attack him out of nowhere. You know, rather than drag it out and drag it out and drag it out, and then by the time you get there, you're you know, by the time you get to the match, you're already tired of it. The thing that's you know different with Punk and McIntyre number one is it, it's, it's essentially because. Punk keeps screwing him. That's that's the thing. But Cole can't keep screwing Max, you know, because 
they don't want to they don't want to beat Max over and over again. And certainly not with Hechicero. We have the Young Bucks and Okada versus Anthony Bowens, Max Caster, and Tanahashi. And uh, the match was uh It was really good. It was it was it was I'd say three and a half stars, you know. The Young yeah. Bucks did some great stuff with Bones and Caster. Okada Bones, Bones more. Yeah, Okada's is he's there and mm-hmm. Tanahashi was kind of there. And they built to the big spot with Okada and Tanahashi together. And literally it was just Tanahashi doing every comeback he's ever done in his life. And then uh, he goes for the high fly flow and he gets cut off. And the Bucks hit the super kicks on everybody. Okada hits the flying elbow on Tanahashi. He gets the Rainmaker set up, but Okada or Tanahashi rolls him up for a near fall. And then uh, Tanahashi's taken out the Bucks, but he gets drop kicked, gets hit with the Rainmaker, and pinned. The one thing with this match is the crowd was very into Tanahashi and Okada before it even started. Like when when they squared off, like that, that look, when the match started, oh, that's what the people wanted to see. And they didn't give it to them, you know, and that so they understood that going in. They've expected it. And that was really the story of the match is people wanted to see Tanahashi and Okada, and they got to see a little bit of it. <laughs> they, um, they got a, they got a, uh, a, a low rent version of their best matches. Well, it's. What, what are you going to do? I mean, Tanahashi's not, you know, in his mind, he's he knows he can't move. And, you know, in, in Japan or anywhere, I mean, Tanahashi's just doing jobs now, you know, for anyone who's good. So the one thing that, like, again, at first, it's kind of like, oh, God, you know, he's going to do, uh, do another job. I mean, you know, whatever. And it makes sense. You don't want to beat the acclaimed. The acclaimed got the acclaimed to have a tag title match coming up. So they shouldn't lose. Um, Tanahashi should lose. I mean. He's the only one who should lose, but now it makes even more sense because now Okada and Will Ospreay and Jay White and these guys are all going to be coming back to the Tokyo Dome on January 5th, or presumably. We had Shingo and Brian Danielson, Owen Hart Cup Tournament match. This match was awesome. Second best yeah. match on the show. Yeah, and awesome. they did a spot where Shingo caught him on a tope and gave him a draping DDT on the floor, and it looked like a bad, bad landing. But they did have one camera angle... Where it was clear it was not a bad landing. And thankfully, they only showed it once and never showed it again. They only showed the bad angle. So he's selling his neck. He's acting like he's got nerve damage. Shingo's working him over. And Brian finally makes his big comeback. And he goes for an arm bar, cross face. Shingo escapes. Fans are chanting, fight forever. And Brian finally puts him in a triangle, lays in the elbows. Shingo tries to powerbomb his way free, but Brian counters in an arm bar from the back mount. And submits him. Excellent. Great match. Excellent match. Yeah, yeah. The, um, you know, the thing with... with, with the, the, there was a couple of situations where guys... Um, I think Will Ospreay did it once. Dante Martin uh, in, in particular. Um, and in this match with Brian Danielson. Where, I mean, people... You know, they sold so great. Like, like, if you didn't know better, you would think somebody really got fucked up. You know, like that. Um, you know, I mean, Brody King wasn't the same thing. Brody King, I thought that, but that wasn't by plan. But this one was 100% by plan. And, you know, he's out there and you're going like, oh, my God, he, whatever. I mean, that's that was the gimmick. And, um, you know, that's, you know, that's that's great selling. I mean, I just thought Brian Danielson selling in this match was tremendous. Shingo Takagi's awesome. You know, one of the best wrestlers in the world. The match was uh basically what i would have expected you put these two guys together and they're gonna kill it and uh the crowd loved it um there's nothing you could you know i mean on 99 percent of the shows you see or maybe 95 percent this would be the best match you know and and in a lot of years this would be a match of the year contender too i mean it'd be better than there's many many years where this would have been the best match of the year we had tony storm mina shirakawa for the aw women's title and Mariah came out with flowers for both of them. Tony came out as a Statue of Liberty. And Mariah stood there, like, who am I going to choose? Who am I going to go with? And she ends up going to a neutral corner. And they end up doing the match. And it was a good match. Uh, Mina goes back, keeps working over the leg. They fought up top. Mina gave her a top rope DDT, elevated DDT. Wasn't really, like, great heat for this match, outside of, like, every now and then people would start chanting for, for both women, but then they would kind of go quiet. And then Tony hits the hip attack. Mina hits the glamorous driver. Tony kicks out again. And then Tony finally hits a German, Storm Zero for the pin. 
and uh, got retained the title. So after the match, Mariah gets in the ring, and Tony goes to help up Mina, and Mina offers a handshake. And so Tony thinks about it, ends up shaking her hand, and Mariah asks that they both hug. They do the most dramatic hug you've ever seen. Then they do a three-way kiss. Place goes crazy. And at the end of the day, she never made a choice. They're yeah, just, because they're because, all because together. They're, they're all together now as a unit. Yeah, yeah. Mina Shirakawa should be brought back. She did an incredible job uh, building this match. And, um, you know. And there is one big problem with this. Yes. There was absolutely, positively, zero follow-up to that entire champagne bottle gimmick that they did on Wednesday. True. She like, didn't sell it at all. Is Mariah angry? Yep, Shouldn't Tony be angry that Mina tried to hit her with a bottle? And A, well, she missed, but she tried. And yep. then she killed Mariah. It was like, they just all lived happily ever after. There was no follow-up whatsoever to that. Mariah Imagine. didn't have a thing on her head? Nothing. Nothing. No, it, was like right. it, it was like it never happened. So it, it was like it never happened. She didn't sell like she was groggy in the match with uh, Soraya? Nothing. Yeah. No, you're yeah. right. You're right. Yeah, yeah. We had Zack Sabre Jr. and Orange Cassidy. Technically, I thought the third best match on the show. They had a great match. Orange Cassidy, you know, he does the gimmick where I don't know any moves and this and that, but, you know, he worked in Chikara for a long time. He trained a lot of lucha, and he knows a lot of cool stuff. And they had a very, very good match and uh, went back and forth cradles submissions the story was zach kept begging him put your hands in your pockets and orange would not put his hands in his pockets orange had vowed to beat him with his hands in his pockets and finally at the end they're doing all these cradles and orange finally puts his hands in his pockets he almost pins him yeah with the european clutch with his hands in his pockets that was a tremendous spot but zach kicked out orange tries the mouse trap zach countered into an arm bar with a leg hold gets the verbal submission and uh, great, great match. I thought Zach came off like a tremendous superstar. I think he may win. He may be winning G one. Good. Uh, um, he in his promo afterwards, he you know he really put over G one. You know, he said like, you know, it was almost like embarrassing because he's on an AEW show, and they're doing a tournament right now, the Owen Hart tournament, and he's basically you know didn't basically he outright said. You know, I, in three weeks, I'm starting the G1, which is the biggest tournament in all of wrestling. And it's almost almost like apologetic. And then he sort of goes like, well, look, it's got the history and it's got, you know, all these all the depth and everything like that. Zach was tremendous, by the way, on his uh, just really intelligent, you know, as far as just like a lot of things that he brought up. Not just that Orange Cassidy is a good wrestler. I don't think you have to be that intelligent to say that, but uh, just a lot of different things about he, he talked a lot about his um upbringing and his style and basically that um you know he when he started uh wrestling in the uk was just getting off television but that was the style that you know he grew up on and he just wanted to do that style and it was like you know he was he talked about he was trained the same place with like where finn balor and becky lynch were trained um and he goes so i mean i learned the same stuff as them but i just like this style and i just wanted to do when i was growing up this was the wrestling i wanted to do and so it's a really it's an important thing to say because regal used to say this too to the to the british wrestlers it's like you all go in there and you want to work american style and it's like so what's what makes you stand out you know and what zach saber did was by going to an offshoot of an older style that people don't do it made him stand out and that's the key is find something that you know, I'm not saying no one else is doing it, but very few are doing it and then get really freaking good at it. And uh, then you have, you know, you have a unique thing and that's what he's got. He's doing he's he got really, really great at a certain style that nobody else is as great as him at doing. And um, it takes a long time when you're a technical wrestler and you're not uh, a big gimmick or anything like that. It takes a long time to get over. But when you get over. You know, you can stay over because you got the foundation. We had Takeshita, Mark Briscoe, Jack Perry, Dante Martin, Leo Rush, and Phantasmo in a ladder match. Vacant TNT title. Total train wreck spots all over the place. Oh, man, I was so scared for these guys. I was like, I, I have to say that, like, I wish this was a six-way and there were no ladders because these guys would still, they'd still be out there killing themselves because that's who they are. 
but you know it's like when you have all those ladders it's like you're kind of in your mind because of what's happened in in the past is that we got to take these crazy ladder bumps we got to take these crazy you know falls off the ladder and everything so we had you know it's like what new spot can we do to kill each other that nobody else has seen and that's what this match was it was like you know mark briscoe who's completely nuts and Dante Martin, who's getting, you know, more and more brave, you know, every time he wrestles. And, you know, all of these guys just, um, yeah, man, just like killing each other, essentially. Um, this belt was so high up in the air. That they actually, they had, they, had, they had tall ladders and short ladders. And they actually had a moment where uh, Leo Rush tried to climb one of the shorter ladders. And it was like, this guy gets to the very top. He still is not going to be able to get this belt. And thankfully, well, that, that, somebody cut him off. Yeah, yeah. That, that was funny. It was funny because early on, like the, it, Jack Perry too, they're climbing this ladder, and I'm going like, "Why are you climbing this ladder? There's no way you can reach the belt in this because this ladder's too short." So they had all sorts of crazy spots, tables, ladders, chairs, and finally, Takeshi ends up giving a blue thunder bomb off the apron to Fantasma through two tables. The place goes nuts. He starts to climb. Mark Briscoe hit him with a chair shot. Jay gives him a J driller onto a ladder bridge that kept falling down, but he finally got it. And then he tries to climb, but Jack hits him with a ladder shot, chair shots, climbs over his body, grabs the belt. Jack Perry the new TNT champion, which I think everybody figured going in. And uh, they did, the crowd did totally turn for Takeshita about halfway through this match. Totally he's, wanted him to win. He's, he's so good. Yeah. And and it wasn't like that early. I, like I, first I, half I, of the match, they booed him, and then all of a sudden they just realized, this fucking guy's great. He should win. Yeah, yeah. I think they loved Mark Briscoe, though, too. Yes. Actually, they did to the point where Takeshi went to climb, and Briscoe cut him off. And as soon as he cut him off, the crowd, like, they were about to boo, and then they realized, we can't boo this guy. And they cheered him anyway. But he's yeah. the only guy that would have got away with that. Yeah. Speaking of the crowd turning, we had Mercedes Monet and Stephanie Vakir. Wait, 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 did, we, did we do the Jericho match? We passed over the Jericho match. Where the hell is it? Oh, there it is. Samoa Jer- Joe, Shabbat, and Hook versus Jericho, Big Bill, and Jeff Cobb. So the fans start with Please Retire Chance. And Jericho grabs the mic and he says, I know you guys don't really mean that. I'm from Long Island. I'm a hometown hero. <laughs> and they boo and they destroy Jericho for a while. And then Cobb and Joe get in there. They got a meat match. The place is going nuts. And then uh, Keith ends up taking the ref. Jericho hits Shabbat in the balls, puts him in the walls of Jericho. We got You Still Got It and No You Don't Chance. And then finally Hook counters into a red rum. Shabbat puts Bill in a choke. Joe puts Cobb in a choke. Jericho gets out of the red rum, but Hook loads up the elbow, hits a Judas effect, and pins him. Mm -hmm. Which, you know, Hook obviously wants the FTW title back, so that's an obvious finish. But they did also build up Minoru Suzuki. But what about Minoru Suzuki? Yeah, so I'm not sure what the hell happened here. Well, there's maybe they do the I guess you'll have two challengers. Well, you know, here's the deal. You probably could do Minoru Suzuki on television, and you can save Hook and Jericho for uh, Wembley. Yeah, you can do that. Yeah. We had, uh, where were we? Mercedes and Stephanie Vacure. So, first half of this match, you know, the fans doing dueling chants are into both women. And then at some point. They figured out Mercedes is from Boston and they just did the whole anti Boston thing. And Stephanie got over. That they, was the other yeah, thing. Stephanie looked great. And they totally turned on Mercedes. And we had fuck the Celtics, fuck the Red Sox. They booed everything she did. They cheered everything Stephanie did. And Mercedes was, like, smiling, like she was fine with it. And so, finally, Mercedes hit the moneymaker, put her in the crossface, submitted her. And uh, the bank statement, the former bank statement, is a much better finisher. So I was happy to see that. Uh, I thought the match, it started out very good. Stephanie looked great. I thought the last half of it, they seemed to be having some problems. Uh, but uh, I thought I thought Stephanie really made herself look like a star. Actually, I thought Stephanie looked better than Mercedes. Like really, you know, as far as just wrestling. Yeah, she looked uh, great. Stephanie looked really good. Um, and it's not that Mercedes looked bad. Mercedes looked good, but I just thought I thought Stephanie looked better of the two, which which is surprising in some ways because um, Stephanie's really improved. You know, I mean, it's like it's like the Stephanie Vacare who wrestled Mercedes last year, which was also a great match. Um, but this Stephanie Vicar is, is a lot more confident and a lot better wrestler than um, 
Mercedes was then they're, they're not not the Mercedes one, but then 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 you know she was a year ago. So, um, but she, I mean, watching her, you know, there's 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 a lot, you know, right now there is a real um, what's the word I'm looking for? There's a real need because there's a lot of women's matches out there, and the feeling that you have to have women's matches out there. So if you were a woman wrestler who's really freaking good, especially with a good look, but just who's really freaking good. Um, there's a lot of places that you can go right now because most of the women, I'm not saying most of the women aren't good, but, but really freaking good. There's only a few and she's pretty close to one of them. So I think that she is someone who, um, I think she's going to, you know, she's going to be, whether it's AEW or WWE, I think that that's happening because she's, she's just, um, you know, the, I mean, for WWE, the negative is, is that her, you know, I don't know that her English is good enough. Um, because I know she can speak English, but I don't know if it's good enough, and they grade you on that. But um, you know, I think that she's I think she's getting a job, you know, kind of out of this match maybe because the match was really good. She got over, crowd loved her. Um, so and you know, so I, I just expect I expect some things from her coming up in the next year. So after the match, Mercedes is celebrating, and suddenly they hit Britt Baker's music. This place went nuts, and she came out, did the DMD, fans were doing the DMD. I thought she was going to go to the ring for like a square off or whatever, but she just stood on the ramp, and then, uh, you know, Mercedes was celebrating in the ring, and and then Britt left, and uh, I think felt like a big match. That's probably Wembley, Mercedes and uh, Britt. Certainly what it looks like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, I certainly got that impression. I don't think that they... It's it's Wembley's still two months away. That's a long time to not have a match and build. But um, so, but they don't have a pay-per-view until then. And I don't think that you should do Mercedes and Brit if it's not on pay-per-view. No, this should, um, be, this should be a Wembley match. This should be a Wembley match, yeah. We had Moxley and Naito for the IWGP World Heavyweight title. Jim Ross, been hospitalized twice with breathing issues and past month or so back doing commentary and uh we got tranquillo naito he was he was his point. i don't want to say he was totally half ass in it but this was not his best night and moxie was doing everything in his power to drag a match out of this guy and you know the the people were were into it to a degree but it was just like there was a spot at the end where Naito just like froze. Like you could see that the spot was supposed to be a destino, and like Moxley looked like he was waiting for it, and Naito just froze. And time stood still, and then Moxley just knees this guy right in the stomach, starts doing some spots. I don't know what the hell happened, but then uh, finally uh, there was a totally botched destino. They called it a destino, but it really wasn't. And then he had a second one and uh, won the title. So uh, I wouldn't say it was like a bad match or anything like that. It was it was a good match, but it was far from the best match these guys could have had together. Well, what's as good as Chicago match? No, Chicago match was definitely better. Um, yeah, he Moxley came out with his New Japan theme. Um, yeah, not much else to it. I mean, part of it too. I mean. Yeah, there was another spot early in the match. I think there was like a running kick spot where they just they. I think that they one one person was expecting to do one thing and the other one was expecting to do another thing. But I thought that Moxley like immediately made it look like this was the plan all along. But um, yeah, um, that's about it. And I, but again, they were. I think they were hurt a little bit because by the, you know when you're in the the next to the last match on a show that is so freaking long. And they're waiting for this main event. It's a hard spot to be in. But when, I mean, the the saving grace was that Moxley is very over. Like when he came out, he got the biggest reaction of the show up to that point. So he was very over. And the fans do see Naito as a big star. So they had that going for them. But, um, you know, once the match started, it was kind of like, um, man, we want to see Will Ospreay and Swerve. You could really feel it in the crowd. So then, yes, the main event was Will Ospreay and Swerve, and after five hours of wrestling, these fans were hot for this match. They saw this as a big-time 
championship match main event with two giant stars. That's that's and, that to me that that is the key to everything in the last month, and it's a, it's an important point because the ratings have not been good to say the least, and sometimes you know you will look at ratings and just go these guys aren't aren't over and you know over is a weird word okay but it's like whatever they're doing did it draw money and the answer is it freaking did so you know and, and again these are two guys who are pretty much like unproven as big time draws both of them in the united states i mean will osprey's proven in japan and and england but not in the united states Swerve is not proven. Um, the last show was probably the closest thing. Um, but the last show, the, the real main event was the Anarchy in the Arena. It wasn't Swerve's match. So this and this whole build has been built like, yeah, they have all these matches on the show, 15 matches on the show. And probably 10 of them had, you know, probably maybe 12 of them had TV builds. But this was very clearly the main event. This was very clearly the key match. This was the you know the weigh-ins and the personal angles and everything like that and it's like uh did it work and it's like you watch this thing before you know it's like yeah they had a great match okay we knew that going in but these guys were over before that match started this match was over before it started so um you know whatever people want to say about oh they don't know how to build guys and blah 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 they don't know how to make stars it's like um you know, it worked. You know, you can say you didn't like it. We can all say we didn't like it. But like I always say, if it works, it works. And it worked. And that's the end of the story there. Well, we talked about the finish of the match, but I mean, the match itself, it was just, I mean, two guys were any spot that you can imagine, they can just do it. And they had so many crazy things. Frankensteiner off the barricade, pile driver on the barricade, Osprey tried an os cutter and got swerve stomped out of midair, angle slam off the top, a stomp off the post onto the announce table. I mean every crazy move in the That table the spot that table spot was insane. I don't yeah. think I've ever seen anything like it. It was like there there was the, I don't know, like with, with 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 both of these guys in this match, it's like there were so many things that could have gone wrong. You know, it's like Man, you don't have to risk your whole career, but you know they're so talented. They're they're going to get they're going to get away with it almost every time because they're that good. But it's like it still scared me many many times during this match when they were trying something, and it's just like you know just one false move. You know what I mean? It can be, and and you're on top. You know what I mean? It's not like you're you're. It's not like you're like a a guy climbing the ladder and I need to get noticed. I'm going to do something insane. These guys, they're already there, and and they're going to have a great match no matter what they do. But God bless them. They were fantastic, both of them. So the only thing I didn't like about the match was at the end they're doing all the near falls, and Osprey gets in the ring and he's like completely eager to do the Tiger Driver, and I was like, didn't he say he was never going to do this move and. It wasn't even like he was, you know, thinking, should I do no, it or you're not? You're right. I he know. Was like, let's go do it. Yeah. And I was, I was, could not figure that spot out for the life of me, but he got countered and then Swerve hit all of his big moves and pinned him. I mean, incredible match. Best thing on the show by Miles. Go out of your way to see it. Swerve came off as like, you know, this was the best he's ever come off in AEW as far as like presence. This is the best he's match. ever come off anything, anywhere, yeah. ever. I mean, the one match, his most famous match was the Lucha Underground match with, with Killshot, which was um, with, as, as Killshot against AR Fox. But, and that match was completely nuts, but it was also edited and everything like that. But, you know, you take that one out of the picture. This is the best match I have ever seen this yeah, night. Yeah, this was this was a night where he went from a from a big star to like a mega star. Like this this guy, you know, he he was oh. the AEW World Heavyweight Champion, and uh, and and Will Will Osprey was a main event draw, and he yeah. was a main event draw, and uh, you know, like this that that's the key to this whole thing is that like they, um, you know, they were both put in a position. Um, to sink or swim, and it's not the wrestling match. Although the, ma the match itself helped them afterwards. You know, they may go in there and, you know, whatever. I, I You know, it's funny with AEW because, again, this year when you really look at it, you know, you had that Revolution show, and it was just like, and this, this was like this. And, I, I you know, the Revolution show might have even been better because of the main event. 
I um, mean, di- just in a different way. But they go in there, and the, 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 some of the, a lot of these shows, they just put on these great shows, and you go like, man, this is so good. And then it doesn't move anything, you know what I mean? Which is the plight of being number two, you know, right now, um, when number one's hot. But it's like... You know, you, I looked at this and it's like, this is not a cold promotion. This is a great, you know, this is this is like a freaking super hot show with guys that are, with main eventers that are over. But, you know, we're going to go watch on Wednesday and, you know, it's not going to be a full house in Chicago. And, I mean, you know, you think, well, now there's momentum and everything like that. But it, it doesn't feel like, you know, the momentum is there the night of the pay-per-view. But then a couple of days later, it's it's not there. It's a really... I think it's a difficult, it's a difficult time because I've seen this stuff in in you know monopoly territories. If you have a show like this and then you come out with momentum, you actually have momentum and business changes. And I don't anticipate that happening here, but maybe I'll be wrong. But um, but for this night, you know, it was just it it worked, and and they were yeah they 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 came in as stars and they left as bigger stars. All right. Well, we've got uh, a lot of other stuff we got to talk about here tonight. So we're joined by Paul Fontaine, who is going to cover UFC with you, Dave, from uh, Saturday night. Paul, what's up? Hey, not much, uh, Dave. Uh, yeah, it's uh, UFC 303. It was supposed to be Connor and uh, Michael Chandler, it wasn't. and uh, we ended up with uh, uh, Alex Pereira and Yuri Pachaska. Not um, quite the and- same feel. No, but uh, but, it, still- but it, it, it still felt like a big time match, though. Oh yeah, yeah, and I mean Alex, I mean, Alex, Alex Behe is a legitimate superstar, by the way, legitimate, oh, yeah. legitimate superstar. He came out; he had the aura of a big star. Um, it helps when you hit harder than almost anybody, and your your striking is very heavy, high precision striking. Um, yeah, I mean, when this thing was over, I think everyone who watched the show was just going like, "I want to see Alex Behe against John Jones." That is the well, match so- to me. Yeah, Joe Rogan put that in everyone's head. Um, he know, put it in my that. head. I I thought it before he ever said it. I'm yeah, watching. Yeah, I'm no, watching. I, I'm watching this guy when he knocked him out twice. He knocked him out at the end yeah. of the first round and the start of the second round. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like uh, broke his toe on the second one. Um, yeah. But uh, yeah, Dana was it, wasn't that broke. Was it wasn't that broken toe like incredibly ironic? Like yeah, that's what I'm I was like, thinking. I, like he throws, he, he breaks his toe in this match, and I'm going like, what the freaking irony that that uh, this card has changed, and the only reason this guy's in this match is because somebody broke his toe, and then he goes and breaks yeah. his toe. Yeah, yeah, and uh, you remember um, John Jones broke his toe against Chael Sonnen and yes. almost lost his title. Uh, as uh, almost lost, yeah, yeah. If he didn't, if he didn't, if he didn't um, um, knock Chael Sonnen out. Yeah, um, they yeah. probably would have stopped the fight at the end of the round when the doctor saw his toe. Yeah, yeah, but no, this was. Uh, I mean, it wasn't terribly competitive. Um, Pachaska, I mean, you know, he hits hard too, and he's very unorthodox. So Pereira, you know, he, he kept his distance, and he, you know, Pachaska was trying to figure him out, but he'd he'd hit him every you know every once in a while, and Pachaska got knocked a little loopy a couple times, and then right at the end of the round. He uh, he knocked him out like it looked like he knocked him out cold, but he hit the canvas just as the bell as the uh, the round thing was was ringing, and he got up and he was really moving not very well at all. Gets back to his corner, then comes out, and then Pereira just hit him with a with a head kick uh, to start the second round, and that was like it. like he seconds into it, yeah, yeah, First, yeah, like right as soon as as soon as this things as soon as things started, he hit him, and and he took he landed several more punches afterwards that yeah. probably didn't need to happen. No, but you know it's it's a title fight, so they're going to uh, they, you know they're going to try to let the challenger or or you know the person. That's, yeah, no, I'm not I'm not saying, yeah, it, but it was yeah. like as soon as that kick landed, he was down, and it was like this fight's this fight's over. Cormier was screaming, "Stop the fight!" Yeah, it was funny. yeah, yeah, he was, he was. Yeah, he was talking about it afterwards, and he's like, "Yeah, you know, I'm a fighter, but when when they see that, it turns me into like a concerned fan, and he almost apologized for it." But yeah, no, Pereira was uh, you know he was something else, and then yeah, Joe Rogan in the post fight interview brought up you know moving to heavyweight and going trying to be a three three uh division champion first ever in ufc um i think uh i think it's happened in one but not in like a major it did happen it did happen in one yeah yeah Yeah. but uh dana in the post fight press conference uh you know trying to like pour cold water on that he's like if he cleans out light heavyweight uh you know maybe we'll consider letting him go to heavyweight aside from ankle i have i mean who's he got really well that's the one I mean, Ankalaev is the one, and 
you know, and and he uh, he actually right now is a is a favorite in the betting. Um, you know, they, there's there's three fights that you know you can do futures bets on, and it's on, on uh, Uncle Iev, Jones, and I think Stipe might be the other one, and um, and Prayer is hundred on against all three. He, he he would kill Stipe. I think so too. Yeah, he would kill. Yeah, because Stipe. Stipe's too slow. He's too um, slow, Jones and he's, would be and he's a too, hell of a fight. I mean, Stipe hasn't fought in years. He's too old yeah. and he's too slow. Yeah. yeah, yeah, and I think he did. Jones, the it Jones fight. A while. Yeah, the Jones fight would be. Uh, it's an intriguing fight. It's a really yeah. intriguing fight. I mean, yeah, Jones. And of course, jo- Jones. Jones, Jones feels. Too. Yeah, Jones feels to me like he's a bigger guy now. Mm-hmm. Um, so that's his advantage, and he's a super talented fighter. But, um, you know, I mean, Pahea just hits so hard. Um, but you know, I mean, look, we've seen. Look. Adesanya beat Pahea in that one, you yeah. know. So, so it's not like he's not invincible, but he's pretty freaking great. I mean, well, when you just, consider what you got to remember, you, though, is Pahea's only been doing this for a couple of years. I know that's <laughs> the amazing, that's the amazing story. I mean, he was a great kickboxer, but the idea of yeah, when he came in, like I I thought when he first got his uh, shot with Adesanya in the first place, it was kind of yeah. like okay, he beat him in kickboxing, so it's a good story, but he ain't gonna win, and then he won. But yeah. but in that fight, as you recall, he was losing that fight until he knocked him out. It wasn't like he was dominating Adesanya. And then the second fight, Adesanya pretty much dominated him. So you're going like, okay, you know, he's like great at kickboxing. This is a different sport. And then he goes up to light heavyweight against bigger guys. And he's just killing everybody. But he's a much better fighter now than he was against Adesanya. Absolutely, yeah. He's debuted in November 2021, so not even three years ago. And he's already 8-1 and one in UFC. With uh, six with, stoppages with two, in and two, two champ classes. and two championships, yeah, yeah, two it's world incredible. titles, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that was uh, you know main event. It was uh, like I said, he this is the second time in a row now because UFC three hundred. He he was also a late um, a late replacement, kind of like it was about a month a month out that they made that fight too against Jamal Hill. So um, you know it. That's twice now, and it's two of the big, four biggest gates in UFC history. This one, obviously, all the tickets were sold for Connor, but right. still did fifteen point nine million, eighteen thousand eight eighty one. So there well, obviously I mean, the, was some refunds, but well, yeah. The, 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 the the thing is, though, is that if nobody, you know, if everybody got refunds, you're not doing uh, almost sixteen million dollars. No, 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 no. Of course not. So I mean, it was like it was like a large percentage of the people were fine with this. Yeah. Because yeah. anyone could get a refund. Yeah. So um, yeah. You know, you make your yeah. travel plans and everything like that, but you can still go. Hey, you know, if I'm only coming for Connor, whatever. Yeah, yeah, and the, I mean, the rest of the card. I mean, it wasn't like it was a super deep card like UFC 300. I mean, it was a good card, um, you know, really good card. It, it, now, the credible story was the co-main event. Um, oh yeah. You know, and, and yeah. this is historic. Uh, earlier yeah. in the day, Brian Ortega, he he got a fever. He wasn't. I guess he. For some reason, they they weren't they they wanted to have the fight at one fifty five. Um, so or, Ortega or, or, Lopez. Okay, so here's what happened: Ortega, a couple of days before, or maybe yeah, maybe yeah. it was the day before. Ortega it was the basically, day before, yeah, yeah. Ortega basically told them that that he can't make weight, and yeah. so um, the Lope Diego Lopez side goes, okay, we'll we'll fight at one fifty. That's fine, and then he goes, he, he can't make one fifty either. So it was yeah. like, okay, we'll fight at one fifty five, and Diego Lopez says, you know. That's fine. We'll yep. fight at 155. Yep. So he agreed to the fight. Then he goes and fights at 165. He he waited at 145 to fight at 165. He fought a guy who, at 165 while weighing 161 with with no cutting. But I guess as far as um, Ige, well, Danny, Ige is also a 145er. So yeah. you know, but, it, they're but, basically but, the same size. Yeah, yeah. I, it's, but the thing with Ige is is that like um, you know like <laughs> yeah, like, Ige like, is like incredible. But I mean like like he probably. Um, I mean, he probably went in at 165. It's not like he yeah. went in. At, he went in at 165, went in and went in at 180 because they're. You know, this was one of the ones where we always talk about same day weigh ins or weigh ins right before you go in. I mean, this really was a same day going in the cage weight. You know what I mean? Not just same day. Like it was three hours before the fight. Yeah, right before you're going fight. in the cage, basically. Yeah. yeah, I mean, yeah. you're not, you're not, you're not, you're not drinking a bunch of fluids and you're not no. eating like a bunch of a bunch of food three hours before the fight this is their real weight you know yeah, so, so he, he gets a call he's uh i think he said he was you know he was at the gym or something and he and he gets a call and 
or he's getting a massage. That's what it was. Who's getting and, massage? Yeah. Yeah. And he gets a call from Hunter and uh, he says, do you want to fight tonight? And he's like, uh, okay. And it's like, it's a co-main event, <laughs> you know, of UFC 303, biggest, you know, one of the biggest shows of the year. And he's like, yeah, I'm down. And so he, he goes and he weighs he, in. The commission sanctioned it. They interviewed Jeff Mullen on the, uh, on the pre-show and he explained it all. And he says, yeah, he was already licensed to fight because he was scheduled to headline in three weeks. Um, he he's was, already he, done he, all his he, medicals. He, he, he was in camp. Yep. Yep. He wasn't. It wasn't like he was. It wasn't like he was just you know goofing off, and they just called him. You know what I mean? Like like you know. Yep. I mean you know he's he's been training. Um, you know, in fact, from a stamina standpoint, he had more stamina than Lopes. You know, if oh, this was for a five, sure. yeah. If this was a five round fight, I think he would have won. P possibly, he might have even finished him in the fourth or fifth round. Yeah. Um, and and Dana said afterwards, like he may still main event that show uh, in uh, on the twentieth because he didn't really take any dam like a lot of damage. And uh, as long as he wants to fight, and <laughs> no Ige, he probably does. He probably does. Uh, so he I, 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 I would wait. They both, they both said they wanted to fight at the Sphere in September. Yeah. And I think yeah. that that would probably be. And Dana owes them both. And they pretty should, much, they, they he pretty much said that, didn't he? He pretty much said that. He goes, I own both. Yeah. So they want to be on that card. Um, you know, I think he's, I think he'll put him on that card. They, I, I, if it was me, I'd put him in a rematch at 145. Because um, it was a good fight. I, I mean, it wasn't the fight. It was, it, 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 was, it, was a, it was a real good fight. Diego Lopes in the first two rounds before he got hurt. I mean, before, before yeah. he got tired. He looked fantastic. He's great. Uh, yeah. He's, he's. I mean, they, this was number 13 and number 14 contenders at featherweight. So, you know, it was, a, it was again, it was a very even matchup. Like, almost, you know, originally he was, Lopez was scheduled to fight, or Lopes was scheduled to fight Brian Ortega, who's number seven. And that would have been a very different fight. You know, Ortega was a submission guy. Ige is, you know, just uh, you know a wrestler and a, uh, and a and a striker. And Lopes is, you know, basically a kickboxer. You know, he's he's got good takedown defense. And yeah, he dominated the first two rounds. Then Ige came back, and Lopes got tired. And Ige clearly won the third round. And like you said, uh, he had all the momentum going in. So Lopes won the fight, but I think Ige. Ige became a much bigger star coming out of this. Oh, uh, you for know, sure. Just between taking the I, fight. I, and the... I, I think Lopes did too, though. Oh, you know, oh yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, it was obviously the biggest fight of his career too. So, yeah, yeah. both these guys, um, you know, did, did really well coming out of this. Like I, I could um, see, I could, I could see, I could see Lopes. Um, I could see him, um, you know, being pretty close to like a championship fight. Like not maybe not right away, but he's got yeah. his hands, his hand speed and accuracy was really like it was impressive to me more than. You know, I mean, I know those yeah. top featherweights like Max Holloway and Volkanovski. You know, I mean, he's not tested at that level, but I thought there there might be something there. I think uh, that Ortega fight is one he kind of needs uh, yep. to, in order Agreed. to get into that. Yeah, in order to get into that title picture. Yeah. Um, and then the the other one was also, I mean, it was. I think this one was made on a week's notice. Uh, the the featured bout, the third from the top, Roman Delidze, moving up to light heavyweight. Yeah, he's, that's a week. Uh, top ten middleweight. To fight Anthony Smith, who's also a top ten. Uh, I, well, I, yeah, I think he's number ten at uh, at middleweight. And this was not a very good fight. Um, Delidze won the first two rounds. Smith may have won the third. I, th I think though, all three judges had a twenty nine twenty eight. Or no, I think there was a two thirty twenty seven to one twenty nine twenty eight. Um, but uh, Delidze won a unanimous decision, and uh, he f feels he should be ranked in both weight classes. And he says he'll fight in both weight classes. But then he called out Kamzat. After the fight, which most guys at one eighty five are going to call it comes out. Yeah, it was it was um, two it was two twenty nine twenty eight and one thirty twenty seven. Okay, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I had a thirty twenty seven, but one so, of the rounds so, 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 so did I. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I would say so too. Yeah, yeah. Smith. Uh, kind of like reporters were asking, you know, is that it for Smith? And Dana says, you know, like he's a company guy. He, you know, he works on our broadcast and everything. He's going to do what he wants to do. Um, he was a little more. Uh, you know, we'll talk about Arlovsky later. He doesn't want to see Arlovsky anymore. But uh, Anthony Smith basically is like, if he wants to fight, he can fight. But if he wants to hang it up, that's fine too. Is kind of basically what he said. Um, and then we had Macy Chase on uh, women's bantamweight. Uh, she got the uh, performance of the night, as did Alex Pereira. I didn't mention, but uh, Macy Chase on uh, beat Myra Buena Silva, who uh, just came off that uh, win over Holly Holm not that long ago. So. Macy Chase on is a contender at bantamweight, and it's not a very deep division. So, um, you know, she's probably maybe one win away from a title shot. And uh, Buena Silva won the first round, but Chase on was coming on at the end of the round. I think she reversed the takedown, and she ended up on top. 
And the first round was close. And then the second round, Chase on got her down and just opened up a huge gash over her eye uh, with an elbow. And as soon as uh, Buena Silva made it to her feet, the ref stopped the fight, got a doctor to look at it, and the doctor said, "No, no, it's too deep. She can't continue." It was really bad. It was a bad um, looking. It was a bad looking cut. They, the doctor was like kind of wishy washy on it though. Like, yeah, I, he kind of wanted like, the ref to make the call. Is, is yeah, what it looked I, like yeah, yeah. And the people were really, you know, because Silva really wanted to fight. Like she's just yeah. like, and people are going like, "Oh, bad stoppage," but that cut was. That was not a bad stoppage, I didn't think. That no, cut was, no. was was way too deep. No, I mean, even after they stopped the bleeding, I mean, you know, she was right out there and arguing, and, and the blood was already streaming down her face, getting in her eye. Like, it would have been dangerous. And Chason is, uh, she's really good. Like, she won the Ultimate Fighter a few years ago. She had, um, she had problems making weight. She was at featherweight for a while, and then she took a year off, got her weight under control, and this is her second win since coming back, and she's looked great. And uh, I, I wouldn't be surprised to see her fighting for a title probably early next year. Mm -hmm. So um, the opener on the pay-per-view was, uh, again, not a great fight. Uh, Ian Machado-Gary, unanimous decision over Michael Page, you know, MVP, Michael Venom Page. Um, you know, it's a typical Michael Page fight. You know, he, he keeps his distance and doesn't really want to get too involved. Machado-Gary kept clinching with him. He took him down a couple times and uh, just basically ground out a decision. Page won the third round, but... Um, it was not a very good fight, and uh, Machado Gary was, you know, he's 15 and 0, so he's definitely a contender. He kind of, you're know, calling out the champion, but he really needs bigger wins than this, and uh, and probably needs a couple of them because he hasn't looked great in a couple of his fights, and this this was one of them. I mean, MVP's a good fighter, don't get me wrong, and he, and he was ranked, but um, th this didn't really do him any favors, I don't think. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Yeah. Um, and then uh, if we want to get into the prelims, I'll start at the beginning. Um, again, like saying it was a deep card because Ricky Simone was in the opener. And, and you know, he's main evented shows before. Um, he fought uh, Venetius Oliveira. It's a good fight. Uh, Venetius Oliveira is somebody to keep an eye on at bantamweight. He's up. He's 21-3 and three now, undefeated in UFC. He won a unanimous decision over Simone. Um, it, he looked really good. Uh, I, I, you know, it's not a, not a fight of the night caliber or anything, but a really good fight. Um, the second fight was uh, notable for wrestling fans. Uh, Rei Saruya, 21-year-old or 22-year-old Japanese fighter, he had Shinsuke Nakamura in his corner. Mm -hmm. And uh, Nakamura helped him train for the fight. So I don't know if that's maybe why we haven't seen him on TV in a while. I, I could be. It might be. No, I don't. That's, uh, it's, got nothing, it's got nothing to do with that. No. Oh, okay. All right. But but he uh, he won. He won a unanimous decision over Carlos Hernandez. Looked great. This was a great grappling match. It actually reminded me a lot of the uh, Kyler Riley Zack Saber Jr. match on Wednesday. Like really? that kind of yeah. Without the uh, you know without the striking, but the the grappling, like just reversals on the ground and lots of weird funky submissions. And uh, Soria got tired in the third round, and Carlos Hernandez won the third round. So he's got a little bit of work to do on his stamina, but but he's he's someone to keep an eye on because again, 22 years old, 10 and 0. Uh, undefeated and uh, yeah Shinsuke was celebrating in the cage with him afterwards it, it was really cool to hmm. see um, and then one of the worst fights of the year um, Martin Boudet won a split decision over Andre Arlovsky um, Arlovsky I mean he's still fighting he's still competitive in all his fights but every fight is the same it, it's I find it really funny because for the beginning of his career up until 2017 every single fight he had I think except for uh, the Frank Mir fight and the Brendan Schaub fight, all, you know, like he was going to, uh, he, they're all finishes. And then all of a sudden, like ever since then, every single fight goes to a decision and usually a split decision because they're, you know, they're just these fights that you, you can't even judge them. And it was, it was just really bad. Um, Cormier and Rogan were calling it one of the worst fights they've seen. And then Anik said, no, no, no. And he brought up Konstantin Orokov and uh, Gabriel Gonzaga. And uh, I was at that fight, and that was really yeah, bad. Yeah, that was so, a really yeah. bad fight. I remember that fight, too. <laughs> yeah. But uh, still, then, uh, still when, when, so when you're comparing a fight to that, even just comparing it to it? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, no, it, and it was, I mean, it was an apt comparison. But, uh, yeah, this was not quite that bad, but not great. Uh, Boudet won the, the split decision. I actually thought Orlovsky won, but, again, I, I wasn't going to complain about it because I was just glad it was over. Yeah. Um, Jillian Robertson, she looked great. She beat uh, Michelle Watterson Gomez, unanimous decision. I actually had a 30-25. I saw some 30-24s. Um, but two judges gave it 30-27 and one had a 30-26. So. But it was just dominant, dominant win. 
for uh, Robertson. But then uh, after the fight, Michelle Watterson, she announced her retirement. And they were played a really nice video package. So I, I would suggest, like, if you're a fan of hers, go back and watch it. It's on the video uh, package ESPN is really cool. Plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The video package is really Re- cool. Really, really nice. So, yeah, and she did a speech after. And, you know, she was in tears. But she said now she's going to be a mom. And she's going to, you know, back her husband like her husband backed her. So that was really nice. Um, uh, pa- it, it, it was it was time for her. It really oh, is. yeah, yeah. I think five straight losses, uh, yeah, seven yeah. out of the last eight. So, yeah, it's not too often you see fighters even get to five straight losses before they get but, cut. But, but the, the thing is, is that she's very popular yes. and yeah. and very well, you know, I mean, not just with the, the fans, she has a name, but also, you know, with, um, you know, management and everything. She's just been a total yeah. pro. She's been a total pro. She's, you know, one of the pioneers of the women's division and, um, you know, had a, you know, a notable career. You know, I mean, she never won a championship or anything like that, but... In building the women's division, she was an she was an original star. Yeah, the the problem with her is, um, I, I mean, she did win a belt in Invicta, and the problem is, is she's too small for straw weight. Um, yes. she was an atom weight in, in, at, uh, at, in at 105, 105 should have been her weight, but they don't have that in yeah. UFC. So she was no, always there's not enough. There's not yeah, enough she was she, she was always she was always fighting people bigger than her. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, nice career, and uh, you know, and and again, you know, she stayed in there. She didn't get finished, so that you know that was good on her. And and Jillian Robertson had her in trouble. She's a great submission uh, uh, fighter, and uh, she couldn't she couldn't finish her. So um, then we had a guy, another guy to keep an eye out for, Peyton Talbot, uh, twenty twenty five years old. Um, he fought Yanis Gumure uh, on the first fight on ESPN. Or I think it was ESPN or ESPN two. We get it all on TSN up here. Well, well, the uh, thing we we got, actually ESPN showed the whole card. I mean, the, oh, did from, they? Okay. From from, oh, from opener, yeah, yeah. Because I actually watched the un, unfortunately, I actually watched the Arlovsky fight. Um, oh. While I was while I was doing something else, and then I um and I watched the um the the, the end of the um Watterson fight too. Oh, but, so, but, so that's how you so saw the so, so they all were on. They all were on. ESPN went from um, six to ten. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, the uh, yeah the Peyton Talbot uh, he got a twenty second knockout over uh, or nineteen second over Yanis Gamore. Uh, just you know, hit a clean strike and then uh, went to the ground and hit him probably an unnecessary punch, but just knocked him out cold. Gamora got up, but he didn't even know what had happened. Like he, you know, he, but he was out cold and, uh, you know, very good stoppage. Um, and uh, Talbot's, you know, he's got a good look. He's a young guy, obviously 25, and uh, definitely a guy to keep an eye on at bantamweight. Um, and, you know, even cut a good promo afterwards. Uh, Gene Silva, uh, featherweight, uh, won uh, second round uh, KO over Charles Jordan, who is a really good fighter from Canada. And Gene Silva missed weight, so but he was. You've never seen a guy happier to be fighting in UFC, and he was just like he was happy and he was slapping hands with everybody. And, and he cut a promo afterwards. He said, I'm, "I'm really sorry I missed weight. I'll do my best to make it next time." But I'm just so happy to be here, and just like one of those guys that you you kind of want to root for. And uh, it looked good in this fight, you know, finishing a guy like Charles Jordan. I think, I think they said it, or no, it was uh, the other Canadian that it was the first time he got finished. But Charles Jordan is a tough guy to finish. Um, then we had, uh, oh, and I should have mentioned Peyton Talbot got a uh, performance bonus as well for his 20, 19 second uh, finish. And uh, next was the fight of the night Andre Feely and Cub Swanson. A really good fight. A uh, split decision win for Andre Feely. All three rounds were close. Uh, could have gone either way. I I had a hard time even scoring it. Like I, you know, I I really didn't know who to give it to. I probably if I had to guess, I would have said Feely. Um, I wasn't I wasn't watching live, so I, I wasn't sending in my scores or anything. So, um, but really good fight. And uh, you know, both guys are veterans. Uh, Cubs, another one that you know, every fight he has could be his last one. He's been fighting back since WEC. A Dana long talked time. about him afterwards. Yeah, yeah said, long, long you know, if he, but if still, he wants to hang it up, that's fine. He, but he's still he's still com- he's still competitive though, and he's absolutely. been absolutely, and yeah. he's been worse. You know, I, actually, I'm I'm. It's impressive that he's still at the level he's at, considering how many wars he's been in and how long he's been doing this. And 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 he he doesn't even look like he's lost a step yeah. at all. I, I mean, good matchmaking helps, you know, because he's he's in there with guys, you know, similar to him usually. You know, he's not usually fighting the young guys, and Feely's been around forever too. Uh, I remember a great fight he had with Max Holloway, like early in in both yeah, their careers. That. So yeah. yeah, he's another one that's been around for a long time. Uh, team alpha male guy. 
And then the uh, the featured prelim, uh, great fight or a, a great finish, I should say. Uh, Joe Pfeiffer, uh, this guy that uh, UFC is really behind, um, you know, putting their promotional muscle behind him. Uh, he was from the Dana White Contender Series. He lost his last fight, so he kind of needed a rebound here, and he got it. Uh, minute twenty five, second knockout over Mark Andre Barrio. Um, overhand right, just floored him and finished him. And again, I, I believe it was the first finish. Uh, first time Barrio has ever been finished in his career. Or no, uh, no. So yeah, it was Rodan. Sorry, my, my bad. Not his first uh, finish, but uh, great, great win for um, for Joe Piper, and he got a performance bonus as well. Cut a promo afterwards, and you know he wants bigger names, wants somebody in the top uh, fifteen, and uh, you know he's he's almost ready for that. Um, I've been calling. I, I want to see like down the road. I really want to see him against Bo Nickel at some point, but mm. definitely not yet. Um, I, I just find that matchup intriguing because they the two guys are great personalities, great fighters, similar looks, similar age, you know. So uh, I think that's a fight we're going to see down the road, but probably at least a year from now. Hmm. So, yeah, pretty pretty good card though. Like uh, again, the the decisions that you had that one really bad fight, but the re- the rest of them were were good, and we got some really nice finishes. Um, just looking to see if there's any interesting notes from the press conference. Um, he, uh, Dana talked about the sphere and said it's going to be the largest gate in UFC history, which and the greatest has the gra- to be, and the greatest sporting event of all time. Yeah, well, That's you know, I, I just watched the NHL draft from there, and my like I watched the draft every year, and man, that building's impressive. Like I can't wait to see what UFC does with it. So I'm, um, you know, I it's, it's, I think I gonna, obviously they're, will be. They're, they're, they're going to have they're, to charge like a thousand dollars ticket at least, yeah. right? Yeah, Maybe well, more. The rent is what sixteen million. So, well, uh, Dana, yeah. well, first Dana, Dana a couple days ago said that it's it's sixteen, and then I heard twenty. Not, I mean, yeah. I think twenty is the. It, it's I don't think rent is twenty million, but I think the total expense of doing it. How, oh, yeah, yeah. How you would ever do a show where the break even is twenty million is beyond me. But I mean, he knew, you know, like like the guys at uh, Endeavor, you know, are, um, you know, they're they're not hot on this thing. You know, it's basically almost like. You know, Dana has talked about it so much that they're kind of like, uh, we, I guess we got to do it because they just had the guys in, and um, you know, they're going like, you know, what are we doing with twenty million? But he took them to the building, and I guess that they were so impressed by the building. But it's very much, it's like, it's only happening once. And Dana's even said yeah. that it's like we're only going to run it once. It's going to be this one show, and that's it. And hopefully, it, hopefully, it looks good on television. You know, like better than anywhere else because they're sure paying a lot. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So we'll see that. Uh, that'll be later on later on this year. So yeah, that was the UFC. Uh, UFC 304 is coming up in uh, uh, next month, and it'll be a double main event: Leon Edwards uh, uh, welterweight title against Bilal Muhammad, and an interim heavyweight title fight: uh, Tom Aspinall and Curtis Blades. That's from London or Manchester, I should say. Manchester, yeah. July, the newer, July the new arena. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So all right, Paul. Thanks so much. Let's get some plugs in real quick. Uh, yeah, uh, you can uh, check out the Dynamite show that I do with Jeff Hawkins on the Fikey Media Network uh, YouTube channel uh, every Wednesday right after Dynamite, 20 minutes after the show ends. And uh, and then uh, my uh, front page articles where I uh, go over all the ratings for uh, Dynamite and uh, NXT and SmackDown and all that good stuff. So uh, every almost every day on the front page of WrestlingObserver.com. And Paul Ace Fontaine on uh, X. Paul Ace Fontaine on X. Thanks so much for everything. We'll talk to you again soon. And Dave, before we have to go today, I want to talk about SmackDown. Well, there's a couple. There's a couple things also. Um, Dana White said that Power Slap will be bigger than the UFC. Mm. Yeah, he said that uh, this weekend. Well, that's not going to happen. No, it's not. It's not. Well, listen. Uh, this. Yes. And also, uh, Will Ospreay's uh, grandmother passed away a couple days ago. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, yeah, that was, uh, they talked about it on the show. He dedicated the thing. When the show started, if you noticed, he was in the ring. When the match started, he started crying. And he would look at his wrist because I think he had her name there or something. I but was wondering why that happened, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was really, really, you know, oh, emotional man. about too that. too bad. Yeah, it was, um, I don't know which day it is, I, but it's, it's, it was a couple days ago. Yeah. Wow. Well, best wishes to him and his family. Terrible yeah. story. Yeah. All right, the uh, SmackDown show, 17,500 at Madison Square Garden, and these fans were out of their minds. Yeah. This was, was like a- one of those overseas shows where they're just th- they're just like cheering and singing and chanting, 
And it was a very newsworthy show because it opens up with Solo and well, Bloodline the, the, showing up. The, the, ma- the main event angle was fantastic. Yeah, we'll get to that. So they show up, and Cody, Kevin, and Randy Orton come out, and there's this giant brawl. And Nick Aldis is out there, security's out there, and uh, Aldis is screaming at Cody because security's torn him apart. And he's screaming, you know, we got a show to run here. And Cody screams, this is the best part of the show. That was pretty funny. He breaks free again, and they have another brawl. And finally, the cops come out, and uh, and everyone gets sent to the back. But uh, Cody cut a promo saying, when it comes to Solo, I don't see a tribal chief. I don't see a head of the table. I just see a seat filler. That led to the main event angle. We had Jade and Tiffany Stratton and Candice, three-way Money in the Bank qualifier. And uh, Tiffany won with the uh, PME. Pretty good match. Tiffany is heading to Money in the Bank. And uh, again, uh, an upset in the sense that Jade ended up not winning this match. So uh, there have been a lot but, of... Uh, she, 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 she shouldn't, but Jade shouldn't be in that match. No. You know what I mean? I well, mean, they're going with, with uh, you know, they're going to go after the tag team titles. Yeah, but she shouldn't, she shouldn't be in that match anyway. That wouldn't be a good idea for her to be in a, you know, like a, another ladder match. We only god damn two more ladder matches this week. After seeing this one tonight, they're both going to have a hard time topping this one tonight, though. So Paul wants to know where Jacob Fatu's at, and Solo says he in here. He's not here. What's the point of a wise man if I don't take your advice? He says he was too dangerous. He's not here. He's not going to be here. That's why you're my wise man, and we're going to make that official tonight. Yeah, it's scheduled that for the main event. Another three-way qualifier, Santos, Logan Paul, and L.A. Knight. I thought for sure Santos was winning, and L.A. Knight and Logan would do their feud. But in fact, L.A. Knight pulled the trunks and uh, pinned Logan Paul. To set up their U.S. title match. So yeah, L.A. Knight's going to do Money in the Bank, and then L.A. Knight and Logan Paul, SummerSlam. Which I guess I should have seen coming. Yeah. So, incredible heat for this match. Uh, it was It was good. We had uh, a couple of other packages. That that uh, Sika video package, mm-hmm. they always do these video packages when people pass away, and they've always like been really good. But this new production team, this was one of the best produced video packages I've ever seen out of WWE. Like even by their standards, this was something special, and uh, it was just it was great. We had Blair Davenport, Naomi, and Indy Hartwell, which was okay. Uh, Jade came down to ringside, attacked Indy because Indy had posted her earlier, and she threw into the ring. Naomi hit a high kick, pinned her. Naomi is in Money in the Bank. And then the main event of the show, which is just amazing. So Solo grabs the mic before Paul can say anything. Fans are going nuts with We Want Roman Chance. And Solo says, before we get to Paul, I want to introduce the newest member of the Bloodline, the Samoan werewolf, my enforcer, Jacob Fatu. And Paul is shocked because Solo said he wasn't going to be here. So they go to break. They come back. And Solo demands, everybody acknowledge me. And so Tonga, Tama, Fatu all acknowledge him. Paul can't believe it. And Solo says, now you're going to acknowledge me individually. And so they all acknowledge him individually. And then Solo goes to Paul. And Paul Heyman, is, he's ashen bloodshot eyes looks like he's gonna cry he says you need to acknowledge me and tongaloa grabs the bag with the tribal beads and solo demands paul acknowledge him and put the bead around his neck proclaim him the new tribal chief and paul takes these beads and he looks at the heaven and he's he's in tears and he says solo i love you and i acknowledge that you are not my tribal chief. And this building the place melted nuts. down. They went, they Just nuts. an incredible reaction. And yes. Paul, is he's bawling his eyes out. And Solo hits a big thumb to the throat. And Paul takes a bump. And he's selling it like he's going to die. And Solo sends Fat 2 up top. He hits a diving headbutt. And they tear apart the announce table. And they take Paul outside. And I was like, oh my god. He's going to take the big bump. And they lift this dude up, and they gave him the shield power bomb through the table. But you go through the table, he slid. O- he slid. Well, o- he was supposed to, but it, it it fell over, and he fell down. But the crowd's doing the holy oh, shit chants. Jacob takes the beads and he puts them around Solo's neck, 
And man, I just watched this and I thought, you know, it's a fantastic angle. When fantastic. when Roman and Cody had that match, and Cody won, and Roman left, and Cody went to the other show, and Solo was in charge, it was like, you know, they're they're doing something, but like, how can you how can you get this? Like, how can you do it? You don't have Roman. Cody's not involved anymore. Like, it's just kind of, it's there. It, it's all right. But, man, they built to this angle here. And, man, Roman Reigns coming back. Oh, yeah, it'll be big. Be, it'll be big. He's going to be a baby face on par with Cody. And No, he'll be, he'll, 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 well, it'll be different. It'll yeah. be different than Cody. But, but you yeah. know what? I mean, in, in reality, um, they probably shouldn't be on the same show. No. Roman you know. should be on SmackDown. Cody needs to be on Raw. Yeah, Cody should go back to Raw. He, Although, but here's the thing: Raw's going to have you know Seth Rollins and CM Punk. Well, that's so. fine. But like, these are your two absolute top baby faces: well, Cody Punk's, and Roman. CM Punk's a big draw, though. He is, but uh, I, but I, 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 but I, agree I with would you. not put him at the level of Cody and Roman right now. And, and you know and what? I, if they can get one on each show and keep them this hot, like, you know. This is a Rock Austin type deal. You've got two massive, massive baby faces. Roman Reigns is going to be like, like, you know, like obviously bigger than he ever was before. Oh yeah, yeah. oh yeah. They're yeah. chanting. I mean, every segment they're chanting, "We want Roman." Well, and the other thing too is, is you've got the whole Bloodline versus Bloodline feud because it's like the layer. I mean, there's a lot that they can open up because you've got Roman and Paul Heyman who will be together, and then you've got Jimmy Uso, and then you've got the whole thing of trying to get Jay back. You know, and they can do a big long story. And then you've got I, the Rock. We got the Rock, and you got Hikaleo. Where where yeah. he, where he was going to fit in the freaking giant guy that no one's seen yet. Yeah, yeah. And Jay and freaking Jacob Fatu, he came out. And oh. He has a great ring entrance, and the people he's already a superstar. And that guy, boy, he got himself into shape. He looked so much lighter than I've ever seen him. And he's a he's a, like I said, of all the guys in the family. The most, the as far as inside the ring, he is the most um, versatile. I guess I don't want to say he's the best because a lot of them are good, and and, and Jey Uso is a hell of a worker, and Roman Roman's good at what he does, and and um, you know they're all good. You know Tamatong has been a you know Tamatong has been awesome. Tamatong has been very very impressive, but Jacob can do more than all of them. And not just that, but like it's it's been two shows, and I know they got to do what they got to do and everything like that. But man, to me, Jacob Fatu versus Cody is such a bigger match than Cody and Solo. It's so much Not, bigger. It, 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 but you don't. It, but it's too early to do it. The other ones, it's time for the. It's time for Cody and Solo. Jacob Fatu and Cody should be way down the line. It's, it's way too early to do that match. Yeah. Well, before we go, tomorrow is Raw, and uh, we've got some stuff added to the show. We've got Liv Morgan versus Zelina Vega for the women's title. Rey Mysterio versus Dominic Mysterio. We haven't seen in a long time, actually. Drew McIntyre, Sheamus, and Ilya Dragunov in a Money in the Bank qualifier. Zoe Stark, Dakota Kai, and Ivy Nile in a women's Money in the Bank qualifier. And Xavier Woods and Karrion Cross has been added. Yeah. So that's the lineup for Raw. And uh, we will be back after Raw. Whoa, 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 whoa. We haven't even talked about the biggest news. Some of the biggest news. The biggest news? Some of the biggest news. Yeah, well, yeah, one of the biggest news for sure. Maybe, you know, Tokyo Dome, January 5th. Um, I thought we talked it, about that. No. It was another show I did. No. Yes, January 5th is now going to be Wrestle Dynasty, which is the Japanese version of Forbidden Door. Mm -hmm. So all of the same promotion, CMLL, AAA, and uh, AEW, New Japan. Are and all, Ring of Honor. And Ring of Honor. Yep, all going to be working together on January 5th in the Tokyo Dome. Mm -hmm. So it is basically a two-night Tokyo Dome, but it's not two nights of New Japan. It's New Japan and then... Forbidden Door 2, basically. Wrestle mm -hmm. Dynasty. So yeah. they announced that. And uh, what's the other and, big news? Um, Arena Mexico, Friday night. Um, Chris Jericho showed up, among other things. Uh, Mystico was in a six-man tag. Uh, match was over. And a guy in a Mystico mask comes in and uh, attacks Mystico. Mystico is so over right now. Like... Like last week, they they totally sold out, and I don't know. I haven't gotten the crowd, but I mean, it looked, it it wasn't sold out, but it was a big crowd. Um, you know, well over ten thousand, probably like closer to thirteen, I would guess. But so anyway, he comes. You know, he's he's so over. 
Um, and then, uh, you know, the guy in the Mexico mask beats him up, hits the code breaker. The crowd did not know it was Jericho, I mean, under the mask. And then he took his mask off, and it was like, you know, they knew, and it was Cor Corazon de Leon, and they did interviews back and forth in both English and Jericho talked a lot in Spanish, a little in English. Mystico talked almost all in Spanish, a little in English. Issue challenges back and forth to a match. I don't know when the match is taking place, but the match is taking place. Uh, I don't know if that's going to be the, um, you know, anniversary show. Um, I don't know which week, but again, it's, it's happening. And then, um, and, uh, so. When it happens, that's going to be another big one. When uh, of all the guys in AEW, because Jericho was a regular there, you know, even though it was like, you know, like le legitimately thirty years ago when he used to work there, he hasn't worked in um, Arena Mexico probably, yeah, probably in roughly thirty years, which he talked about. Um, never worked with Mystico at Arena Mexico, and um, so that would be a real big one. And then the other thing was. Uh, Kyle Fletcher and Atlantis Jr. for the uh, Ring of Honor TV title, and Atlantis Jr. won the championship, which was not a surprise. I mean, it kind of made no sense for him not to, but it did draw there. Uh, they had a good match. If you saw the the Lee Johnson match with Kyle Fletcher on Ring of Honor television a couple weeks ago, that was a better match than than this one. But this was a a pretty good match. You know, like um, you know, it wasn't like um, you know match of the year or you know like a, like the best. Kyle Fletcher match you've seen, but pretty good match. It was kind of, you know, not lucha, but the crowd was still pretty into it. And um, yeah, you know, it's another, but it was like a, another hot, another big hot Friday night crowd. So, um, you know, I mean, as far as like the Jericho thing, um, you know, I don't know, I don't know exactly where, uh, you know, when this thing's going to happen. Um, Fletcher. I presume that Atlantis will be coming to the United States and doing stuff on Ring of Honor television for a while, like in Texas and everything like that. So it's, uh, you know, another person for the Texas shows and, you know, um, and probably for the that that July uh, 26th, I believe, is the date of the, the Friday night pay-per-view that they're doing from uh, Arlington, Texas. So I'm going to guess that they'll probably do a rematch there, most likely. But, uh, yeah, from, from a CMLL standpoint... This thing has been great for their business. I mean, you know, when Moxley and those guys came in, it was a sellout. Kyle Fletcher helped draw a big house because Jericho wasn't advertised. Jericho is going to draw a big house for them. Um, you know, they got one of their regular guys that they're building up in Atlantis Jr. to have an American championship that's defended, that will be defended or, or, or recognized on their show. This is the first time um, an Arena Mexico guy has won a championship an, a, a foreign major championship since la sombra beat shinsuke nakamura for the intercontinental title the new japan intercontinental not the wwe and that was like 11 years ago so it's a pretty big deal and the people like you know when when atlantis won i mean they were you know that was like they were pretty hot for that you know it was like a big big freaking deal so so CMLL, you know, getting hotter. Thanks. It's just so funny how, like, here, you know, when when we bring in the guys from, um, you know, other countries, and all these people are complaining. Oh, I don't want to see guys from other countries. Blah 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 blah. And it doesn't look. It doesn't necessarily draw ratings or anything. You know, big as we've seen. Um, but down there, man, the mentality is different. When they get to see somebody who's like, you know, even a Kyle Fletcher from another country. It's like, as a main eventer, it's like, hey, we're getting, you know, we get to see somebody from the United States who's a real star, and they freaking draw like crazy. And, and um, I know, like, the guys who have gone down there, um, they love working there because it's just it's just a great crowd to work before. They're so loud, especially for Jericho and Mystico. Oh, my God, because Mystico, you know, he's, you know, He's so big there. You almost have to see some of it. It's it's unbelievable how big he is now. It's, it's really, in the last months, this 20-year anniversary thing is just, um, as big as he was, it's just made him special in a different way. Like, uh, you know, I mean, there have been, like, news articles where they're going, like, uh, as a modern version, you know, like Santo and Blue Demon and everything. He's really at, he's really at a level. Um, I mean, he's a bigger draw than he, he was a bigger draw 
in like 2004, 2005, 2006 when he was first in and hot. But this is probably the biggest, not even probably, this is the biggest he's drawn since then. And it's a completely different thing. You know, then he was the young guy that they pushed like crazy and the hardcore fans resented and all that. And now he's a guy who's like, there is nobody who boos this guy. You know what I mean? He is a, you know, all those hardcore fans that used to hate him, they love him. You know, he's been there for 20 years and he's a superstar. Very Cena-ish. Very Cena-ish. All right, we've got to wrap it up, everybody. We'll be back tomorrow after Raw. That's it. We'll talk to you again after a while.